Hello and welcome to Dave's Metal Workshop. Today I'm going to show you how to make your own rust. Um, so yeah, uh, uh, if you want to be cheap, if you want to save money, this is the way to do it. It's a very easy, effective way to come up with rust. Um, I have since moved on to using a rust effect palette, which I think is probably a little bit more versatile. But, you know, if you want to save money, because that's about 30 bucks that set, if you want to save money, this will cost you like a dollar tops. So, first thing you need to do is get yourself this thing. Steel wool. Second thing you need to get yourself is this. Some vinegar. Now this is very, very important. Don't do this inside. When you combine these two, you get noxious fumes. I think it's actually like some kind of horrible prussic acid or something ghastly. Anyway, put your steel wool into a jar like this. Chuck some vinegar in, kind of fill it up to the top so that it's all covered, and then leave it outside with the lid off for a couple of days. You know, maybe two, three days up to a week. After that, you end up with something funky like this. So this stuff is gruesome. So basically the vinegar rusts the steel wool. Um, make sure you don't get steel wool that's like covered in soap as well. Just you plain, you know, just plain old steel wool. So yeah, it rusts away the steel wool. If you keep the lid on, it keeps it kind of black and a little bit moist still. And this funky stuff is great. So I used this on my uh, Japanese staff car diorama, and I'll show you some stuff, show you some shots of that in a minute. But basically, <clears throat> once you've got this stuff, here's my good old test bed. You just want to. So you can see it's still got liquid in. So this is at least whoa, a year old, this stuff. Um, looks ghastly. And it's really, it gives you a good texture. Doesn't look like much right now. But if we leave this to dry, try and get some nice grains and crud in there. Leave this to dry overnight. You'll see what it looks like in the morning. So yeah, it really does not look special right now. Be fairly generous with it. So you can still kind of see in there the texture of the steel wool a little bit. Yeah, I'm just doing this randomly. You'd obviously you know, perhaps work it a little bit more carefully on your final thing. So you can see some pieces of steel wool in there still. I'm going to leave that overnight and come back to it in the morning and show you guys what it looks like. But in the meantime, here's some shots of the Japanese staff car diorama. So what I love about this is that you can get really fine streaks, just painted on really fine, mild. Um, yeah, look at that, it's really subtle um, and it just oxidizes itself. Or you can glob it on thick and you get that nice grainy texture like rusted metal. Um, yeah, more thick globs here. Really quite versatile. And here we are back 24 hours later. So, as you can see, it's dried off a lot lighter. Still a little bit dark up in that top area near the turret ring. But overall, a lot lighter than it was when it went on. And basically, you just brush away the bits you don't like. So, if you want great big chunks of texture, that's great. If you don't want big chunks of texture, just brush them away. And look at them. I'll try and zoom in nice and close, but look at that graininess there. It's just beautiful. Let's get some zoom happening. So, for that, yeah, I'm happy. That's. There we go. So I'm really happy. I mean, this bit just here, love that. That looks like rust to me. It, well, you know why? It is rust. That's why. <clears throat> so we'll zoom back out again. Do a bit more. Just make sure my camera won't fall over. Do a little bit around the edge here. So I'm just using like a fairly stiff brush. The beautiful stuff the beautiful thing about this stuff is that if you don't like what it's done, like this here looks pretty unrealistic, 
if you don't like what it's done, get some water and it comes right off. Bang, it's gone. So yeah, that's how to make your own rust. Um, <clears throat> it's very cost effective, it's very very cheap. Generally, I have moved on to using pigmented rust. So, uh, for example, I've got this medium rust or dark rust, and I just find the pigments are perhaps a little bit more... Oh, goodness me, well, well, that nearly went badly. Um, I just find the pigments are a little bit more versatile, say, than the rust I was just using. Um, if you want that sort of streaky down the side effect, it's just a bit more subtle. So just using this, this is the dark rust that I'm using here at the moment, for example, and it just gives you a little more control than globbing on that big thick stuff. So yeah, for an example, there's the two. It's just a bit more subtle, but if you're after big and powerful, bang, can't go wrong, and it's cheap as chips. Um, but yeah, I have moved on to using the pigments and also the uh, the rust colours that I've shown you earlier. Um, I'm not trying to spruik AK Interactive here, it just happens to be the stuff that my nearest hobby store stocks. But yeah, if you're willing to shell out the money, this stuff is a little bit more precise. If you just want to save money, bang, make your own, you can't go wrong. And as those Japanese staff car shots showed you, you can get some really nice subtle effects with it if you're careful. So I hope this has been helpful. If you have any questions, do please chime in below or get in touch and let me know your thoughts. If you've got any other suggestions for videos, this video was in response to an email that I got from somebody asking how do you make your own rust. It's that easy. Um, if you've got any other suggestions for any other videos, yeah, please let me know. I'm all ears. And um, yeah, I hope it's been useful. I'll check you next time. See you next time. Bye.